my name is Kim. Today I'm going to tell you storytelling about the Nutcracker, chapter one, the Christmas Eve. A soft, fluffy layer of snow covered Clara's house on Christmas Eve. Inside, there were, a party was in the full swing. But one very special guest had in the life. Clara watched for him at the window. Suddenly, there was a loud knock on the door. He's here! She cried, dancing over and flanking open the door. It was Clara Godfather's. She gave him a big hug. What a warm welcome on such a chilly night, he said with a chuckle. Merry Christmas, he said. Clara loved her godfather to sit. Something magical always happened when he was around. I have a very special present for you this year, he told Clara as he placed a, pre a package under the tree. The Misery Present, Chapter 2 That night, Clara couldn't sleep. She lay in bed, thinking about her present. It can't hurt if I have a little peek, she thought. Finally, Clara tiptoed downstairs. She soon found a present tied up with a big red bow. On the ribbon, there was a tag with a message. Merry Christmas, Clara. I hope this will protect you from love, Godfather X. I wonder what Godfathers mean, she thought. Slowly, Clara untied the bow and, and fold back a corner of the paper. Inside, she found a wooden nutcracker door, dressed like a soldier. Just then, the clock stopped midnight. Clara gave an enormous yawn. In a few minutes, she was fast asleep under the tree. Chapter 3 The Magic Begins Clara woke up when the start feeling very confused. She couldn't remember where she was, and her door had vanished. She looked around and saw she was under the Christmas tree, and it seemed to be growing. What's happening? She said. She said, but the tree wasn't growing. She was shrinking. Soon, she was as small as a mouse. Out of the corner of the of her eyes, Clara thought she saw something leaping around. Frightened, she darted behind a person and heard the tree rustle behind her. Clara spun around. Don't be afraid, Clara. I won't hurt you, said a friendly voice. Clara was astonished. Her dog had come to life. I am a nutcracker prince, he said with a bow. And I'm here to protect you. The kitchen mice are planning to kidnap you. The prince pulled out a whistle and gave a shrill blow. At once, the lid of a toy box flew open and a long line of toy soldiers marched out. Such standing in rows, they saluted the prince. Attention, he said, he cried. Clara need our help. Prepare yourself for battle, men. Well, the cannons, he said. Mice began to appear in the shadow. Slowly, they crept closer. Clara hid behind the prince. Steady, man, steady, he shouted. Wait for the signal and fire! Huge lump of sheets flew from the cannons and stuck down several mice. Some love land in the corner and some other mice scrambled after them. Excellent work, man! Um, roar and roar the prince. 
as the bear as the last mile vanished. But the fight wasn't over yet. Bravo! Such an evil voice from the shadow. A mouse wearing a crown and an eye patch appeared. That's the mouse king, the prince whispered to Clara. It is the best you can do, jeered the king. It will take more than that to beat me. Now, hand over the girl. I would rather die, said the prince. That can be arranged, the mouse king sneered. Soon, the prince and the mouse king were locked in battle. Their swords clanked as they danced around the room. I will make cream cheese out of you. Take that, your rascally rodent. Then, the sister stuck. The prince tipped on the lump of cheese and sprawled on the floor. Seizing, the, seizing his chance, the mouse king put his sword to the prince's neck. Well, 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 I'm going to enjoy this, <laughs> he said laughing. As the mouse king pulled back his sword, Clara whipped off her shoe and threw it as far as he could at his head. He fell in a heap on the floor, knocked out cold. Chapter 4, Slave Bear Ringing Clara rushed over to the prince. Are you alright? She cried. Oh, yes, thanks to you. She said, We must celebrate, she added as Clara helped him up. I know just the place. The prince led Clara to a golden sleigh behind a Christmas tree and helped her abroad. Oh, we go, boys! The prince called to the four reindeer. As they gathered speed, the sleigh started to rise up into the air. They rode out through an open window and into the night. After some, after some time, they came to the forest covered with crisp white snow. We're nearly at our first stop, the prince announced. Hold on, we are going down. The snow crunched under the reindeer feet as it land. Just then, a beautiful lady dressed in sparkling white appeared among the trees. Kralas, I would like to meet my good friend, the Ice Queen, says the prince. What a lovely surprise! The queen led them to her icy palace, where glistened into in the moonlight. Inside, icicle chandeliers hung from every ceiling. You are alive in time for the dances, says the queen, as they walk into the grand balloon. The piano began to play, and a ballerina dressed in silver and white twirled into the middle of the room. They twinkled like snowflakes as they spun around. Have you already remembered this? whispered Clara to the prince. As the music came to an end, after the game of cash with a palace poodle, it was time to leave. Do we really have to go? <sighs> Sighed Clara. Yes, we really do, says the prince. There's someone else I want to meet you, and we don't have much time. Goodbye, said Clara. Chapter 5 The Land of Sweets. Clara grabbed when they reached the next stop. The trees were bursting with marshmallow blossoms and lollipop flowers sprung from the ground. Then Clara saw the mountain were topped with Melt chocolate and new shaped rivers flowed down them. Where are we? She asked, amazed. Land of Swiss, the prince replied. Before them stood a huge massive castle decorated with all kinds of trees. Lifting Clara from the sleigh, she set her down on the palace steps and her fanfare trumpets rang out. At the top, the doors opened and a fairy appeared, dressed from head to toe in pink. Clara, this is the sugar plum fairies, says the prince. She rules over the land of Swiss. I hope you have a sweet tooth, 
says the sugar plum fairy with a smile. She led them into the grand hall, where the tables were covered with chocolate, cakes, cookies, and candy swirls. Watch the ruby chair, whispered the prince to Clara as Clara sat down. The made out of raspberry mousses. Clara ate until she thought she would pop. After the feast, the band stuck up and the dancers from around the world performed for Clara. First came from the dance of chocolate and Spanish pairs spun around to snapping castanzas. Next came to came the exotic dance of coffee, a beautiful Arabian princess danced with smooth swirling movements in time to soul suiting music. A third group of dancers had come all the way from China to entertain everyone with their team dance. Many more dance follow each one, showing something good to eat or drink. But the final dance was very different. A group of ballerinas, all dressed as flowers, performed a slow waltz for Clara. Their arms unfold gracefully like the, like the petal of flowers as they weave in and out of each other. And now, it's time for us to go home, said the prince sadly. With a sigh, Clara climbed into the sleigh and waved goodbye to the sugar plum fairy. Thank you for an amazing evening, my cracker prince said, Clara with a yawn. She was so tired that she fell asleep on his shoulder. When Clara woke up, she was back under the Christmas tree and the prince was gone. Only her doll lay beside her. Oh, it's for only a dream? She cried, but it seems so real. Just then, Kara spotted the tag that her godfather had attached to her present. I hope this protect you is, is safe. I wonder if that means he knew the Nutcracker Prince would rescue me, thought Clara. Maybe it wasn't just a dream. Thank you everyone for listening to uh, my storytelling. And goodbye, see you next time. You're familiar. You're familiar.